if Louisville is wanting to start winning more of these 50-50 football games, they have to stop starting slow. You are Locked On Louisville, your daily podcast on the Louisville Cardinals. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Card Nation, what is going on, everyone? Welcome into this Wednesday edition of the Locked On Louisville Podcast. I'm your host, Dalton Pence. I want to take this time to personally thank you all for making us your first listen of the day. Just a reminder, the show is free and available on all streaming services. Five days a week, your team every day. Today's episode of the show is brought to you by FanDuel. Place your first $5 bet and you'll get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. All you have to do is visit FanDuel.com to get started. Joining me for his weekly spot on the show is former Louisville football recruiting assistant Grant Money. Grant Money. <laughs> Grant Mulligan. G Money. You got it right like, the first time. You got it right the first time. You got it right the first time. Grant Money. You know it. And so well, a legend was born. And so I I was always here. I was always here. You anyway, here last week. I wasn't. It was a scheduling conflict for both of us, man. Don't try to turn it into we were both both at the fairgrounds. They act like two legends couldn't exist at the fairgrounds. We met up. Um, we did meet up. It was a Thursday morning of last week. But nonetheless, getting too far off track. There's a lot of football talk on the show today, Grant. Um, we're going to start by discussing the slow starts. No pun intended. Louisville has been really bad in the first quarter of games this year. Something that wasn't the case last year. We'll dive into Two buy-sell arguments that were introduced by you all, the listeners, and then obviously Grant and I have one apiece saved for the finale. Grant, we start out discussing, you know, this season as a whole, Louisville four and three, three losses by seven points. It's not by much. It's one of those things to where a a conglomerate of issues are are hurting the Cardinals in this sense. But I want to bring something up to you since the Jacksonville State game. If you go back to that game um, where Louisville had a 14 to zero lead since then in the last, what is it? Five games. The Cardinals have not ended the first quarter with a lead. They've either been tied or they've been losing. I feel like that is one of the main culprits as to why Louisville is losing these seven point games is because they're already having to start out by digging themselves into a hole that they have to work their way out of. Yeah, and I, I'm going to bring one point to us that, that I think is a major factor, and it, it works both ways here, and that's quarterback comfort, right? So this this is something that we're struggling with offensively and defensively. I'll start talking about defensively. Our lack of pass rush has been a problem. We've known that we've been – this has been one of the most surprising aspects of the team. It's not something that's gotten a whole lot better. We have a superstar edge, Ashton Gelati, who's getting doubled every game. He's not been able to make much of an impact because the rest of the guys aren't stepping up and and being able to make plays in in his absence or in the absence of or against like single blockers. But in doing so, we're allowing opposing quarterbacks to become way too comfortable way too early. And and we saw the instance with Cam Moore. He's a guy who gets comfortable almost immediately, anyways. But when you give him clean pockets like that, and, and this goes for any quarterback, but you see the complete – it's like you know a good shooter in basketball. You see him start going in. Your confidence rises. You feel good. The flow of the offense starts. And and that's not something I feel like we do a good job of starting early in on an offensive perspective. Um, obviously, the points I talked about with defense, I think we're letting these guys get too comfortable. They're picking us apart uh, early. And I think it's taken a while. And I, I don't really even put that on Chuck. I think we're having an opposite problem. I think we've had some protection issues early in games. I, I don't think that we've been able to establish run or maybe make a um, make a concerted effort to, to get Chuck in rhythm, get some early rhythm throws, short completions, uh, and things of that nature. So I, I think – it's a tale of quarterback comfort. I, I don't think that we're doing a good job for creating it for Shuck, and I think we're making it way too easy for opposing quarterbacks. I don't disagree. You look at the last four games, Notre Dame, um, SMU, Virginia, and Miami, all four of those games, the first possession in which the opposing offense has had the ball has ended up in points. 
Um, Georgia Tech, or I'm sorry, Georgia Tech had the they had a three and out punt, but immediately after that, they started to get their offense and rhythm. So on a technicality uh, aspect, it doesn't apply. But Georgia Tech was another offense that got going pretty much early on. Um, Notre Dame marched down the field and scored. SMU, what, four plays, five plays? It felt like Virginia marched down the field and scored. Miami kicked a field goal, but still, Louisville was down by double digits really early on against Miami. And I think that if you look to the offensive side, I mean, you look at the drives. Yes, they went down and they scored against Virginia, but um, Georgia Tech, they didn't score. Notre Dame was the short field to where they got the kickoff fumble. I mean, that that is what it is. They did score, but they didn't really have to go far to do it. I feel like early on in games, these situational play calls on like third and fourth and short, from like the opposing territory. This is where I want to see like Jeff Brom treat this game like he did in the second half of the Miami game because whatever we were doing just really hadn't been working all that well. Yeah, and, and I think that the situational play calling is a conversation uh, even on its own, but I think uh, making a making an effort to get a, a multiple playmakers involved early in the game, spreading it out, making it hard, stressing defenses early rather than going into that bag late, late going into that bag in the, in the second uh, half has, you know, it, it's looked exciting for our second half games, but it's just sometimes coming out of the gate. It's, it's felt like there's too many misconnections or that we aren't, making enough effort to spread the ball around, get our different threats. I mean, especially now that we got Colin Lacey back, you know, having him and your Corey Brooks going straight out of the gate, uh, even getting Chris Bell involved, um, unfortunately losing Jamari Johnson for the season really hurts, but we got other playmakers in the tight end room. Obviously we have a great stable of young backs that we could make use of, but I think just being able to get, guys going earlier is going to be a game changer for this offense. It was like you said, it wasn't something we faced as much last year. So I'm not sure what it's going to take to, to get us in the plus in in the first quarters, but I think it really begins and ends with making their quarterbacks more uncomfortable and making ours more comfortable. Before we get into buy, sell G um, last thing that I'll say is when you look at the rest of the schedule, the five games, you can make a case that, of course, by default, you want Louisville to start early and not you know, take their time you know, getting going. But when you look at it, you've got some road games where that would be critical. Boston College, really sort of always a chaos game. You want to do what you can to set the tone there. Clemson on the road, sort of the same thing. Then you have Kentucky at the end of the year, and the longer you let them stay in the game and not have to score many points, the better off they have. And then a Pittsburgh offense that we still kind of don't really know much about. So sort of the schedule, it's almost like it needs to be emphasized even more just because of the teams that you're going up against in the context as well. And it's also important to note that we're going to be going into tough environments, right? Most of our games remaining are road games, and it's going to be much easier for them to get going in, in the friendly home crowd. Uh, we're at a, you know, we're coming off travel, we're coming off of hotel stays that are unfamiliar environments, you know, un, unfriendly stadiums. So it's going to be a lot easier. Like we had a lot more opportunities in home contests to get going. Now it's going to get a lot harder when we have to go into enemy territory in some very tough road environments. So uh, it's something that we we need to get off to the right foot on because it's going to be a lot harder to mount those comebacks when we're on the road, especially in this league. I agree. And when we come back, we're starting the buy-sell segment, um, which you, the listeners, have – or we have I, – I take that back. I have chosen to uh, – of the ones that you all have, have asked me to, uh, to put into the segment. I appreciate that. If you have a buy-sell that you want Grant and I to debate and answer, drop them in the YouTube – Comments below. We really want to uh, get some outside feedback and see what the issues are for your, um, you know, pressing needs for this team. And we'll answer some questions about Louisville's issues with high school recruiting, um, how confident we are in this team turning it around. Coming up in the next segment, you want to keep it locked on right here on Locked On Louisville. <coughs> 
hear Grant goes coughing during the middle of the uh, in the middle of the of the break. But nonetheless, it's time to talk about LinkedIn. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. Look, it's not just another job board. It helps you hire professionals you can't find anywhere else, even those who aren't actively searching for a new job. But look, they might be open to the perfect role. In a given month, over 70% of LinkedIn users don't visit other leading job sites. In fact, 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. Hire professionals like a professional on LinkedIn. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash Lockdown College. That's LinkedIn.com. Yeah, LinkedIn.com slash Lockdown College to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Cardinal fans, I want to take this time to personally thank you all for making us your first listen of the day. Do want to um, give you a heads up. I will be in Los Angeles this weekend to watch mine and Grant's Los Angeles Chargers going to SoFi for the first time. I will not be back until Monday evening. So there won't be a Boston College recap episode until Tuesday. I apologize about that. Um, But there will be an episode tomorrow with uh, the Locked On Boston College host, um, AJ Black, to sort of preview that matchup more in its entirety. But nonetheless, G-Money, it's time. Buy, sell. Those who don't know what it is, there's a topic. There's a hypothetical. If we believe it, we buy it. If we don't, we sell it. The first one, <clears throat> not to give my best G money impersonation on that untimely call, hey, but it seems this season that more of the transfers that Louisville has brought in have been misses rather than hits. With Louisville's high school recruiting as bad as it is right now, are Jeff Brom's portal tactics sustainable moving forward, or do we need to start seeing more of an uptick with high school recruiting? I imagine the, the buy sell is that Louisville has to do better recruiting high school talent. Are you buying or selling? Well, we actually last time that we did a buy sell that was submitted by the fans, uh, we got almost this identical question, and I'm going to answer it the same way that I did last time for those who didn't get to hear it the first time. But I am in very much in the boat that we need to spend more time and effort in getting talent organically, and by organically I mean in, in high school. Portal works great for – the, it worked great for us last time, but the question is exactly right in that when you live and die by it, you can't expect every season to turn out as well as last season did, especially whenever you're getting players who are not coming from your scheme previously. Like It's much more easy to know what you're getting when you get a transfer that maybe came from your previous style. Like, transfers we got from Purdue we got quite a few of them you know essentially what role they're going to play in your offense and your defense you know what kind of production they've given you before you're familiar with the player but it's much harder to know when this is going to be the case when you get them from a completely unfamiliar program and while it's it can also be the case for high school kids you get more time to develop these players and work with these players from a younger age. And you get that foundation built up of younger players who have been within the program for a while, who have been within your system for a while. His system familiarity in the college game means a lot. It doesn't matter how talented you are. If you don't fit within the system or if you don't understand your role within the system, it's really hard for you to assimilate to the team. So I, I am, I guess, how does this frame I am buying high school recruiting has to improve. It can't just be supplementary. I I think the philosophies need to flip. It worked for us last year. I don't want to be a prisoner of the moment. Said this last time we talked about it too, and say that it's a complete, we need to abandon the tactic completely. Obviously there's success to it, but I think we're missing out on creating foundational players. And it just doesn't feel like the interest from the staff is there to create that foundation and search for a closer split between portal and high school recruiting. I get the the thought behind it that, you know, why why go get an unproven player that's never played 
when you can go get a guy that has played major snaps and can step in right away. It sounds good on paper, but the reality is, is that this isn't basketball. It's a lot easier to do this in basketball when you only have maybe 12 to 15 spots to fill. When you have the classes of the size coming in each and every year, replacing 80 to 90 percent of your production from each season, I just don't feel like is all that sustainable. And I know that we're living in some weird times in college athletics, and I know that in a vacuum, Bringing in portal players is on paper supposed to help you with high school guys. But look at some of the contributors now. Ashton Gelati, Quincy Riley. Now, Quincy Riley was a transfer. I will be fully transparent there. Ashton Gelati. Um, you know, some of these other players that – Michael Louisville, Gonzalez. Yeah, Michael Gonzalez. A little bit that Lobo is bringing in. And even last year, too, Satterfield's – Roster holdover is is going to be gone after you know the next season or two, right? I mean, guys, they're getting older; they're running out of eligibility. With the way that the high school recruiting is right now, Louisville has the seventy fourth best class. It's a little rough. I'm buying this. I'm not saying you abandon the portal because you can't, but there has to be more of an honest mixture. Like I don't think you can tip the scale one way or the other it has to be more so like i would like to it, here's the thing about this if you're going to go with uh you know a smaller number of high school recruits the average ranking has to be better like the rating has to be better you have to start recruiting better players and i know that ratings are sometimes political depending on programs right i mean i'm not naive enough to to not understand that but it i, I think it's pretty clear that you know this year what right now Louisville has had three players Isaac Brown, Duke Watson, um, and maybe Deuce Adams in the future. I mean, how many players from the 2024 class are going to perform? You know, how many players in the 2025 class are? So I think you have to get back to, and it's it's it, it doesn't cost as much to go get a four star player versus a mid level transfer, and you kind of lose the time to scout, the personality aspect of it. We saw two guys leave Louisville because they weren't personality fits. Something you really can't do in terms of scouting, especially when you cut that number down. Louisville had one of the highest ranked portal classes. They had talent, but a lot of it was because they brought in more players than anybody else. So I think there has to be a mixture. I'm going to buy it. I'm not saying that Jeff Brom's wrong in what he's doing. I'm just saying that I feel like there needs to be a mixture moving forward. Um, second one, before we get into our own buy sell, I have faith that Louisville has a ton of talent on this team. And what I saw from the Miami game, even though defensively they struggled, I still have a lot of hope for this squad Buy sell Louisville will win four of the last five games of the regular season. That's tough. Um, I, I did go on record last time we were on here and I said that I, I believe we were going to be Clemson. And it, every time I watch Clemson, it gets a little harder. But you know what, man? I some of the other ones don't look as tough as initially. This is a tough. This is a tough buy. I think we. I think we drop one. I would absolutely sell if it was we were going to win out. It's really hard. One. This is tough. This is tough because I could see us losing too. I'm gonna. I'm going to buy it just for the sake of, of belief that it's probably, I don't feel good about it. This is one of those you always say is like, you don't, you, you leave the store and be like, did I really need to buy that? Yeah. that? But that's how I feel about this. I think we're definitely, we'll drop one. Uh, I'm not sure which one it's going to be, but it's a lot of tough road ahead of us. This is absolutely the tougher stretch or the tougher half of our schedule, at least on paper. So I'm gonna buy it because I I believe in Brahman Co to to get it together. But man, is that a tough buy? Um, I, I I'm selling this. I, I think totally uh, fair. I I think <clears throat> Louisville's losing to Clemson. Nothing that I've seen from either team. Like Louisville hasn't beaten Clemson yet in the ACC. This is this is the best team in the ACC. That Clemson's fantastic. 
Um, Kate Klubnik is starting to put it together too, which was my fear when you talk about their opportunities. And you're in Death Valley Junior, keyword Death Valley Junior. Um, it's it's a tough one, and I want to say that I think that this team can turn it around, and I do think that they can. But we just saw a team that once again didn't really have many answers for, my, for Miami, and that's just, that's a great offense. You give them credit, but we're seeing the same issues continue to be issues week in week out. If you're telling me that they're going to, A, win on the road at Boston College, that's fine. If you tell me, B, they're going to beat a decent Pittsburgh team at home on Steam Day, okay, that's fine. If you tell me, C, they're going to win at Kentucky, something they haven't done since 2017, I'd say, okay, that's fine. But you're telling me they're going to do all three of those? That's where I, I look at the probability of it, and the fan in me wants to desperately buy this. But the realistic mindset that I'm having and having to question the same things over and over, like I don't really have many issues with the offense, but there's just something with the defense that it's it's not getting better. It's really not getting better at the moment. Until it shows that it can, it, it's hard for me to double down on it. So I'm going to sell it. But you already know what time it is. Grant has one. I have one. You got to tell us who wins in the comments below. We'll discuss when we come back. Today's episode of the show is brought to you by FanDuel. NFL fans, you can start the season with a large return on FanDuel America's number one sportsbook. When you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, and so much more on the same page where you place your first $5 bet. Here's how it works. You literally place your first $5 bet. And you'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. When you go to FanDuel.com, you'll see that Louisville right now is about a seven and a half point favorite over Boston College on Friday night up in Chestnut Hill. I want to know what you think about that because seven and a half, it makes me a little bit worried. I would definitely go with Louisville money line as I think Louisville wins this game. But seven and a half seems to be like a lot of points for a defense that is giving up some big time yardage. So, be sure to look into those on FanDuel.com, America's number one sportsbook. We're into the final segment of this Wednesday edition of the Locked On Louisville podcast. G Money and myself, Grant, is a former um, Louisville football recruiting assistant. G, the floor is yours. I'll let you ask yours first. Bye. All second. right. I'm going to talk about a player who has had limited opportunities so far, but has impressed me almost every step of the way. So I'm going to say my buy sell that in the second half stretch of the season, Duke Watson has the second most touches in the running back room. So obviously Isaac Brown has taken over lead back deservedly. He's been fantastic. But when we look behind him, look at guys behind him. Um, it, Don Chaney's losing his grip on it. He is not impressed in a lot of moments. And this last week, the splits were almost identical, or in terms of touches, were almost identical between Don Chaney and Duke Watson. Duke, or, and Duke Watson has a touchdown, and he was much more effective as a rusher. So I really like what he brings. I like the way he complements, and I see a lot of viability with this double freshman backfield. I think he's coming on strong. I think it's very possible he has the second most touches so that's catches and rushes in the running back group, second half of the season. Mm -hmm. Now, when you say touches, you mean catches as well? Did I hear that right? I just said that, man. I said I, rushes I, and you, catches. Well, you kind of went out a little bit on, on the Wi-Fi. I, so I had to clarify. Rushes no, and good. catches. I'm going to I'm gonna buy this. Um, even when you look back to Virginia, he had seven carries. Duke Watson did. Don Chaney had one. Now, Chaney, I'll give it to him. He made some big-time plays against Miami. Uh, granted, they get lost in the sauce because we lost that game. But he, I think Duke will, but it's not going to be by much because the secondary option really hasn't been getting much work. Less than what eight carries is is probably uh, justified for for the for the backup running back. Um, Isaac Brown is going to continue and continue to get the lion's share of the carries and the receptions out of the backfield. In which he should, in which he should. But I also think that uh, Duke Watson has played well 
He has shown some big time things, especially he caught that touchdown pass against uh, Miami. He's looked pretty good and he's looked, I'll be honest with you, he has proven me wrong because I thought he was a red shirt candidate completely. I thought he was a red shirt candidate, but ultimately I was wrong. So I'm going to buy that. I think that that's, it's pretty justified. I'm definitely in the buy. He's impressed me a lot in his, in his limited sample size so far. Obviously the, the spotlight's going to go to his, his freshman uh, classmates, Isaac Brown. He's been sensational, but I, I see a future with these two. They have complementary styles uh, and I think that they could do a lot of work together. So I'm also at the buy. Good deal. I went, I went back and forth with this one um, because this is a little bit challenging. Um, I went back and forth with quarterback. I went back and forth with wide receiver. Like one that I was going to go with was going to be Tyler Shuck passing yards. He's number eleven in the country in yards per game. I was going to say, could he get up to top five? I was thinking, eh, I'm going to hold off on that. My buy sell. Ja'Cory Brooks plays himself into first-round draft consideration by the end of the season. Sell. So, so, okay. I, I like it. I do like the question, and I could absolutely see top rounds two or three, a day two guy, 100%. And I do see an angle – in a draft that is fairly weak on the top end, lacking blue chip talent across the board. But I'm thinking about some of the other guys this year who are considered first round and early first round receivers. There's three of them. There's three. <clears throat> well, well, technically four. Technically four. But then again, you also see like there's never been more of an emphasis on wide receivers. Like you're seeing four, even five receivers go in the first round. I'm not saying he's going first round. I'm saying considered. First round. I still, I'm saying, I'm gonna sell it. I'm I, I would take him with the day. I think he could play his way into a, a day two pick. Maybe a team will think about him in the first. Maybe, but you look at the body of work of the guys that are in front of him, and this is no disrespect to Jacory. I think he has really found a great footing here at Louisville. I have loved his time here, and I hope he continues popping off. But there are some guys in this first round conversation with receivers, I just, <clears throat> I'm not sure I see the same player, if that makes sense. It does make sense. And again, this is one of those that you, it depends on how you view uh, Ja'Cory Brooks. Brooks at the moment is currently ranked 11th in the country in, in receiving yards per game. And for some of that, he's been like the go-to guy and the only guy with Colin Lacey having been hurt. I, I'm going to buy this. It's a soft buy. It's a did I leave the store and make the right decision type buy. But I think with the more that he produces, because you're starting to see more and more national analysts talking about him because he's making phenomenal plays, Uncle Mo is a real phenomenon. Like you see momentum take off. I could see him also testing really good, being 6'3 with his speed. He's not, I mean, he's a senior. He's not even really all that old. It's not like he's a sixth year guy uh, and age really works against him. I mean, he's got the um, body of work at Alabama, but this year, I mean, he's having a phenomenal season. And I think he continues to do what he's doing on the pace in which he's doing it over the next five games. And assuming Louisville makes a bowl game into the bowl game, I feel like he has the talent and also the body of work to back it up to where he could be in first round consideration. That's all. I can absolutely say. buy this if he lights up the combine. But I think, I think even like a mid level combine where it's like a good, not great showing. I don't yeah. Know. I think, I think for this to happen, the combine angle is right. I think he has to light up the combine for this to happen. But I, unless he goes on some otherworldly tear, which is possible, and I sure hope it does. I think without a, just a phenomenal – and also, funny note, you say he, it's not like he's that old and we're, we're talking about, like, true seniors that way now. Like, with the, with the state of college – Well, I mean, football, I have to say, I have to be I fair know. because your quarterback is a year younger than I am. I – your quarterback is young. my age. So yeah. you're a year younger than I am. It's tough, it's tough man. It's tough to see what this. You graduate high school. Huh? What year did you graduate high school? What, we, we're not airing this out for the fans. Just kidding, 2017. 
So, yeah, you graduated a year after me. So, yeah, again, but that is the point. And I know that this is one that it all comes down to belief. This is one of those to where, like, I, I just feel like it's almost like a Sheldon Rankins type rise that just came out of nowhere. And I understand that having Tet McMillan, Luther Burden, Isaiah Bond, uh, Travis Hunter, which I guess at cornerback or receiver, whichever you want to put him at. What are you doing? Isaiah Bond, baby. Oh, I didn't know what you were doing. You don't watch the man? You don't watch his tape? His I touchdown do. celebration? Come on, man. He's not not a real ball in the way this year. But um, overall, let us know who you think won buy sell in the chat. Just a reminder, that is going to wrap up today's show. We'll see you here tomorrow.